Good evening. I'm Gloria speaking with you from Treasures Bakery and Confectionaries, Lokoja, Nigeria. And I have here with me Dr. Panampasi Paul. And um, we're going to be talking to him, know a little more about him than we already do. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Gloria. Okay, um, sir, so we know your name and your face. Apparently, over the years, you've been quite popular and you've become a very common name in most Nigerian homes oh, and of course you, home and abroad <laughs> and uh, I believe a whole lot of people have been blessed by your ministry and it's a privilege having you around here. The pleasure is mine, okay. thank you. I um, would like to know a little more about you. First of all, we'll be asking how long have you been in the music ministry? In the music ministry this year makes it uh, 44 years. Mm. Um, as a secular musician, I played music for 10 years, and that's from 1964 to 1974. Uh, so, in total, I've been in music for 54 years. Okay, so what was the pull factor for you to go into gospel music? Um, I think the only factor there is that my life was changed. Um, I got transformed, I got born again, and it's a totally different world from, from the world I was raised up in, and uh, it was a life of, it was quite regimented life, uh, however, it was so, so physical, you know, uh, having been raised up in the military barrack, um, you know, everything had to be regimented, everything was, uh, um, you know, Timed from this time to this time, you must be doing this. But then, th there was no goal for the future. There was no, there was no hope for, for someone like me. You know, being creative, and uh, um, I was actually considered by so many people to be almost an outcast because. Um, it was expected that I was going to take over from my father as a military officer. So I became a disappointment to them when I took on to music. But then I couldn't do anything else. Not that I couldn't really, but whatever it was that I would have done or become uh, would have been a second class. You know, it wouldn't have been the the, 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 the original essence of my creation. So music is actually not something I learned. Mm -hmm. Music is something that I was born with. Good evening. I'm Gloria speaking with you from Treasures Bakery and Confectionaries, Lokoja, Nigeria. And I have here with me Dr. Panampasi Paul. And um, we're going to be talking to him, know a little more about him than we already do. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much, Gloria. Okay, um, so we know your name and your face. Apparently, over the years, you've been quite popular and you've become a very common name in most Nigerian homes. Oh, and of thank course, you. home thank and you abroad. Very much. <laughs> and uh, I believe a whole lot of people have been blessed by your ministry. And it's a privilege having you around here. The pleasure is mine. Okay. Thank you. I um, would like to know a little more about you. First of all, we'll be asking, how long have you been in the music ministry? In the music ministry, this year makes it uh, 44 years. Um, as a secular musician, I played music for 10 years, and that's from 1964 to 1974. Um, so. In total, I've been in music for 54 years. Okay, so what was the pull factor for you to go into gospel music? Um, I think the only factor there is that my life was changed. Um, I got transformed, I got born again, and it's a totally different world from, from the world I was raised up in, and um, it was a life of it was quite regimented life. Uh, however, it was so so physical, you know. Uh, having been raised up in the military barrack, um, you know, everything had to be regimented. Everything was, uh, um, you know, 
timed from this time to this time you must be doing this but then th there was no goal for the future there was no there was no hope for for someone like me you know being creative and uh, um, I was actually considered by so many people to be almost an outcast because um, it was expected that I was going to take over from my father as a military officer. So I became a disappointment to them when I took on to music. But then I couldn't do anything else. Not that I couldn't really, but whatever it was that I would have done or become uh, would have been a second class. You know, it wouldn't have been the 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 the, the, the original essence of my creation. Mm -hmm. So music is actually not something I learned. Mm -hmm. Music is something that I was born with. Wow. And if you're not born with 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 a thing, you can never be an expert in it. Mm -hmm. So I discover that excellence is in what we refer to as a gift or talent. And having you know, studied a little bit, I discovered that, you know, a, a gift or a talent is defined as an inborn, God-given ability in a man, which makes that man to do one particular thing excellently without ever learning it or with little instruction. Wow, that's really interesting. I think our generation... Okay, um, so what is your relationship with the Treasures Bakery family? <laughs> Well, I've I've been coming to uh, Lokaja for you know quite a bit now, uh, doing some ministration with uh, my friend and brother, uh, Bishop Johnny Benu, and then uh, touring uh, Lokaja. You know, we we were here for one whole week, and we visited almost about eight different churches, and it was during that period that I came across. Uh, my brother, an MD of uh, Treasures, and this was where the relationship started. Mm -hmm. And you know, much later, uh, so some two years down the line, um, I heard that something like this was going on, and they wanted me to come be a part of it. And obviously, uh, I'm always eager to to be in fresh grounds, uh, doing fresh you know uh, uh, ministry work and when I heard it was going to be a carol thing uh, that really got to me and I thought okay let's see how we can use the Christmas period uh, to be able to bring awareness to people in terms of who the Lord Jesus Christ really is and what his purpose of coming to the world is all about that's a nice one and um, apparently you were here last year for the season five Carola yeah. treasures season five right okay um, what do we expect from these years Carol people would have had experience with you last year <laughs> and I want to believe this time around you're back better stronger so what do we expect well you know being being a spiritual thing it's always very good to keep uh, you know your mind open and not to preempt the Holy Spirit nor limit the Holy Spirit's expression but I'll be honest with you that I'm expecting that this time around um, it's going to be a carol of hope uh, because of the way uh, the world is today and especially our country there are so many trouble areas so many people are discouraged Many people don't even know where the next meal is going to come from. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, it's an opportunity to be able to give them a sense of hope, either by presenting something to them or reaching out into their spirits with a song they might never forget. Okay, that's a beautiful one too. And um, we would want you to give us a word. What for the people, for the season, for upcoming gospel musicians because apparently lots of them will be looking up to you i'm very sure of that so <laughs> what would you have them here for me? well i've been asked several times by so many people both locally and and internationally about uh, you know giving advices to young people but this is the one single thing i have learned in life and this is what i would want to tell you that the quickest way to succeed in life or in whatever thing that you are doing 
is to slow down. The fastest way is to slow down because nobody who is in a haste ever accomplishes anything. And I've discovered that it is so easy to overtake God. I've discovered that God is so slow. In fact, so slow that we can overtake him, overtake his plans. But when we slow down, a few years down the line, you will discover that everything you've been trying or dreaming to accomplish, you've actually overtaken them. You know, uh, someone like Joseph, he had his dream at the age of 17. And he would have been in such a hurry you know, to, to accomplish the dreams. But his brother sold him, or first of all, threw him into the well and brought him out, sold him as a slave. He served in Potiphar's house, you know, then was sent to prison and all of that. When you look at the whole of these, you know, occurrences, they look like a whole eternity. But do you know that everything happened within just 13 years? And by the time Joseph was, was only 30, he had already commenced into the actual dream that God gave to him while he was 17. And, you know, everything that we do today, or the things that we accomplish, are a product of the dreams we had when we, when we were teenagers. And uh, um, anybody who rushes, like the Bible would say in the book of Proverbs, you know, anybody who hastens to become wealthy is never innocent. You can never be innocent when you are in a rush or when you hastily accomplish anything. So my best, uh, or rather my advice to you young men, uh, women watching me today is slow down. When you are slow, you become heavier. When you are slow, you are not easily moved or carried away by anything. Your density becomes heavy. And when you are slow, you are able to think better. And you are, you are now able to accomplish things you know, with ease. But when you are in a hurry, it is very, very easy to slide off and go into a crash. So, slow down. Because your future is already yours anyway. So, it is going nowhere. It's just there waiting for you. But you need to grow in stature and in favor with God and with man. Even Jesus Christ had to slow down. Thank you. Now we've heard from our father, Dr. Panam Paul. As ironical as it sounds, if you want to really go fast in life, slow down. Let go and let God. In the spirit of Christmas, we urge you all to be a part of this year's Carol at Treasure Season 6. He will be there ministering live alongside other gospel artists. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you. And uh, my invitation to you, don't miss it. If you miss it, you really miss. <laughs> all right, sir. Thank you.